Uh, you know, as we were talking before, we've been talking on this last stage of manifestation, and I told you we might be here for just a little bit because there's several phases, there's several different things we need to touch on, and and um, and so we've been talking about the word and how it moves, how it moves through us from the point of us first hearing and understanding and seeing something in it that belongs to us all the way down to watching that thing come to pass in our life. And it is a process and it is a journey. Um, it is it is about a, a relationship building. And so um, last time we left off, we talked about seeing the kingdom and we talked about the, um, you know, when God said to me, what makes you think it's not enough? What makes you think what you have is not enough? That we have to see the kingdom. And we went back to the example of feeding the 5,000 with the fish and the loaves and how we saw each one of those things produce after its own kind, right? That we saw that Jesus blessed what he had because the blessing is in essence a multiplication tool. <laughs> The blessing is a multiplication tool that we're given because we are blessed. And he said, if you can see the kingdom, you see what you have available in the kingdom. You see that it already is there. It's already there and multiply. The blessing brings that down to whatever is in our hands and allows it to just keep re reproducing and reproducing after it's kind. And so we, we talked about that and we talked about having a problem with receiving. Um, and, <clears throat> and again, so we're going to, I, I want to go back to the scripture. We're going to start back at talking about this seeing of the kingdom and talk a little bit more about the kingdom. Um, in Matthew 6, 30 through 34, and this is the message translation this time. And it says, if God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen, don't you think he'll attend to you, take pride in you, do his best for you? What I'm trying to do here, and this is, this is, I love the message translation of this, you know, but he says, what I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. Isn't that what we're talking about? We're talking about receiving instead of striving. He says, I'm trying to get you to relax and, and, and don't be so preoccupied with getting that you can't respond to God's giving. You can't respond to just receiving what's already there and this is this is the mentality he's asking us to deal with who says it's not there <laughs> who says it's not there because you physically don't see it see the kingdom see the kingdom all right um he says so you can respond to God's giving. Michelle, we're in Matthew 6, 30 through 34 in the message translation. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things. But you both know God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. So he's saying, pay attention to that. See that first. God reality. What is God's reality? Is God's reality what is physically seen? No. If that was the case, we'd have no sun or moon. We'd be in dark. <laughs> the earth would still be void if that was God's reality. That is not God's reality. God's initiative What does he start? <laughs> How does he start? He starts at the end. 
God's provisions. Don't worry about missing out. He says, don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. And when I, this, this is, you know, when I, one of the first times I read this and realized that what he is talking about here is, is a rhythm. We talked about hypnotic rhythm and outwitting the devil, right? About things that we do, we don't even realize it. We've created a rhythm. We've created a habit in our life. And this scripture here is actually indicating rhythm. There is a rhythm to lack. There is a rhythm to poverty. There is a rhythm to those things. And it's what this is what it's indicating. Worry. Right? He's saying, don't think about, don't worry about it. Don't you think God's going to take care of you? There is a rhythm that creates anxiety. There's a rhythm of constant frustration. There's a rhythm of doubt. There is a rhythm of worry. Those things. There's a rhythm there. There's a pattern there. And that last little sentence that generally we, you know, every time I've heard it, it being preached or talked about, and I mean, I, I did the same thing. I really looked at it. It says, you know, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough troubles of its own. Deal with it when you get to it kind of mentality. And I just thought that's kind of tough, but okay. <laughs> right just deal with the trouble when it comes then he he showed me but that's a rhythm that's the rhythm Jesus walked in you see he wasn't carrying a bunch of fish and loaves with him when he went on the mountain was he no his rhythm was when I need something I'll pull it down <laughs> when I need something I'll bring it to pass there's a rhythm there too of just walking with God and accessing what we need when we need it. That's what that verse is about. I, I always looked at it as I don't have enough, but when I get to this moment, you're going to provide. And, and it is true in a sense, but it is also an indication of lack. It's me feeling lack versus if I was in Jesus's shoes and I just knew I had so much, I don't have to carry it with me. I just get it when I need it. That's why you can, pa I could pack, it's all packaged up in the spirit. It's too heavy for me to carry everywhere I go. Right? So I just access it when I need it. That's what he's saying. God's going to, the provision, what you need to access when you need it is going to be there. And that is another rhythm. Um, we, and, let, and, and just to touch that a little bit more, Matthew 11, 28 through 30 in the message translation says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. The unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Man, that's a rhythm. That's a rhythm. They're saying grace has a rhythm. Grace has its own rhythm in which whatever is needed in any situation is easily provided. It's not heavy, it says. It's not ill-fitting. It's not burdensome. So I can tell the difference between what rhythm I'm walking in. right? I can identify the rhythm I'm walking in. 
by if it's ill-fitting? Is it heavy? Is it burdensome? That's a rhythm. Is it free? Is it light? Is it easily supplied? That's the rhythm, rhythm of grace. So some there comes a point where we have to realize I got to break out of that rhythm of lack. I got to break out of that rhythm of brokenness. Brokenness. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> right? Because G there is a rhythm, there is a pattern, you know, Jesus walked in and, and he, it was the fact that he saw the kingdom. He knew he was the kingdom, right? And so there was nothing that was not accessible to him. He didn't have to, like we say, he didn't have to put a knapsack on and carry the loaves and fishes with him. He knew he could get to it at any point in any day, at any time. And so we want to check our rhythm. You know, I realized, and, and this was because he saw the kingdom. Man, I thought, I never thought about it, but you never saw Jesus saying, Father, I don't have enough to eat. Can you provide me with enough to eat? I don't have enough money. Can you provide? I never, we never saw that in the Bible. Everything he did was always about whoever else he was around. Why? Because he already knew he had it. He already knew he had it. Seek first the kingdom is seeing first the kingdom. Seeing your access to the kingdom and everything is provided from there. It's at the Matthew says, everything is provided. All these things will be added to you when you see the kingdom, when you see the access to the kingdom. So we got to get out of this rhythm, like we said, of brokenness, rhythm of not enough. And, and here's where what I mean by rhythm and, and what that looks like. It looks like cycles. OK, um, last week and I don't, I don't know if it was it may have been on takeover call, but I was just talking about how God, God and I were having this conversation about breakthrough and he was just we were talking about how breakthrough can't happen. It, what a breakthrough is, is you breaking a cycle. It's you coming up to a moment. It might be same situation similar situation but it all had the same root and you ch seeing something different and making a different choice that opens a door for him to be for for breakthrough it opens a door for manifestation of the word we have to break cycles in order to break through but that's our choice and it's based on what we see what we see we have access to like I said, you know, he said, what makes you think $100 isn't enough for a $200 bill? <laughs> if it costs $200 and you only have $100, what makes you think you don't have enough? The world's math? <laughs> Can we do kingdom math? Where five loaves feed 5,000. Where two fish feed 5,000. How do you make that exchange? It's, it's kingdom resources. And there's so many, and see, this is the point. So, so let's use that as an example. I come up with a $200 bill. I have only $100. Well, the cycle would dictate, the normal cycle that we are in would dictate, Lord, I don't have enough. I'm going to worry about this. They're going to cut this off. Let me see who I can call. Let me see who I can borrow from let me let me do this do this right I, that's I go through all of my options that continually back me into a corner because I don't have enough and it's the same cycle or there comes a moment 
where we come up to that $200 bill and we have $100. And then we, wait a minute, hold up. This is illegal in my life. I don't ever not have enough. Okay, so we're going to speak to this bill and we're going to tell the bill is either going to be cut in half. <laughs> we're going to tell the bill you're going to be paid. We're going to bless this, this $100 and we're going to call you sufficient. Y'all ever had somebody cancel a debt? Yeah. I well, you got to believe for that. I mean, I don't I don't believe that you it won't it wouldn't happen. <laughs> right? You've ever seen a, a mistake? You know how Monopoly has a bank error in your favor? <laughs> right? There's so many different ways that $100 becomes enough for that $200 bill. But you have to see that first. Not, I don't have enough first. That's seeing the kingdom. And all these things are added to you. We break the cycle that way by having a different response. Having a different response. It, my different re response shows the elevation of the word in my life. It shows that I've taken the next step with that word. It's come out of the place of just the illumination of it. You know, we've been talking about how the word moves, illumination. Then I, that's me seeing, okay, there's something here. Uh, there's something that applies to my situation. I see that. But often we get, you know, Don and I were just talking about this. We get excited about the illumination and we basically go off on a tangent from that and get frustrated because we really didn't meditate on it enough. Okay. That's the next step to get to the point of revelation at revelation. It belongs to me. You can't tell me any different, right? I don't, um, I, I, there are certain things that, so revelation paints a picture that says, this is the only option. You know, and, and you don't allow anything else. When the Bible says that I'll give you the keys to the kingdom, right? That whatever you bind or it says allow here is allowed in heaven. Whatever you don't allow here is not allowed. It, it's not allowed. So do you allow? <laughs> do we allow the lack? Do we allow the poverty? Do we allow the not enough? I don't allow it. I don't allow broke things in my life, broken things. There came a point there used to be a time, man. And I'll tell you what, I, I, <laughs> my, um, you, you could see, you know, tape, you know, how tape, will, you use tape to hold something together. Should have gotten a new one a long time ago. You tape that thing up, make it last longer. <laughs> right. Right. You know, I would walk around with broken screens on my iPad <laughs> all the time. <laughs> on my phone. I don't allow broken things in my life anymore. I stopped. That was, that was a clear that line I drew. I had to draw when I was taking myself out of a place of lack. That it was a switch in me that says, this is not allowed in my life. I'm going to get a new one. Right. I'm going to, th this has got to be fixed. We have, if you, if you, really begin to pay attention. You got to look around you and see what things you've allowed, what cycles have you allowed that, uh, or, or, or what, what have you allowed access to you that keep you making the same types of decisions that keep us in the same cycles. Now, as that word moves through us, and we have spent time in the meditation process and we finally get to that place of revelation where there is no other option than this word comes to pass. And you can't tell me any different. Right. Then I come to a place where now something shows up that kind of looks like that situation and I speak to it differently. And now I legislate with that word. 
right? I'm going to, I realize that I am in the driver's seat in that position, not my situation. I'm not under circumstances. Remember, you know, we talked about that before. People say, well, under the circumstance, you're not under any circumstance. Get that, that, that little saying out your vocabulary. You are not under any circumstance. You are over it. So those, those things, those cycle breaking choices allow us to begin to establish a new rhythm. And, and, and so this, um, this access, this, this unforced rhythm of grace, like we talked about this walking and working with God, Jesus talked about it in John five and 19 in the past, in the, uh, the passion translation, uh, first it says, so Jesus said, I speak to you timeless truth. The son is not able to do anything for himself or through my own initiative. I only do the works that I see the father doing for the son does the same work as his father. So he says, I only, and, and if you look in the mes message translation, he says, I'm telling this you this straight. The son can't independently do a thing. Only what he sees the father doing. What the father does, the son does. Yeah, that's a pattern. That is a rhythm. He's in the rhythm of, I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I see my father say. He's only, he says, I don't do anything on my own accord. It's what I see. Well, well, what, how is he seeing the father do anything? It's because he sees the kingdom. He's accessing the kingdom. This doesn't, this doesn't say, and, and I looked in several translations, it doesn't use the past tense of what I have seen him do. Because we know Jesus was there at the foundation of the earth. Right? It, it doesn't use a past tense. What he has seen his father do. It says what I see. It is an active engagement with the father at all times. That is the rhythm. That is the, the pattern in which Jesus walked. Whatever I see in the kingdom is what I do here. And I don't do anything different. It's a pattern. It's a rhythm. Only what I see. Now, I cannot, without having spent time on that word and without having spent time with my father, hear or see anything. I don't know what is words. I can't see anything. So it's a pattern. It's a cycle. Now, Jesus walked with that. He knew he had that access, just like we were talking about a minute ago. He didn't carry a ton of money with him. He didn't carry a bunch of um, drugs for the paralytics. He didn't carry extra arms or limbs with him to pop it on when they needed it. He didn't, right? Matter of fact, um, you know, and I didn't pull this up, but I, I have to, and I'm not for sure what translation it, it is, but, you know, when you hear the story about how Peter, uh, we were talking, I think uh, maybe Michelle was talking about Peter's journey and how he cut the ear off of the soldier, uh, right? And I remember hearing that story, um, you know, so many times. And for the most part, as I remember now, again, this is back when this was when, I, you know, you just hear the story, and you're not really reading it for yourself, right? But the, and I, I, th I believe it's in the message translation, or, or the passion, but it said that the Bible doesn't say he picked up his ear and put it back on. It says he put his hand to his ear and it grew back. 
<laughs> it grew back. Okay. That was, so what I mean is Jesus wasn't carrying extra body parts. <laughs> okay. His access allowed him to pull down anything from the kingdom that needed to be manifested in that moment. And Jesus knew that. What happens to all the situations in your life if you became aware that you had access to anything you need for any given situation at any moment? What happens? You know what happens when that when you when you perceive that peace? Peace is what happens. Rest is what happens. When you perceive that you have everything you need, peace. And and doesn't his word say that's why he went to the cross? It says the, his, the chastisement of our peace was on him. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Every stripe, every lash he took on that cross, everything was so that you could always walk in peace. And the way he practically did that was give you access to everything you need. Um, let's look at Luke 17. And first, uh, let's see, I'm going to look in the Passion Translation verse 20 through 21 and it says jesus was asked by the jewish religious leaders when will god's kingdom realm come jesus responded god's kingdom realm does not come simply by obeying principles or waiting for signs the kingdom is not discovered in one place or another for god's kingdom realm is already expanding within some of you He's telling us where the kingdom is. <laughs> They're looking for a physical place. And he's saying, nah, mm -mm. it's already expanding in some of you. Now, you will also, let's look at the uh, message translation of 20 and 21. It says, Jesus grilled by the Pharisees on when the kingdom of God would come answered, the kingdom of God doesn't come by counting the days on the calendar, nor when someone says, look here, or there it is. And why? Because the kingdom is already among you. Now he's talking to, he, he's saying, I am the kingdom. <laughs> I am, I'm here with you already. The kingdom is here. It's and it's it's a foreshadowing is of within you because the Holy Spirit came to take his place. Right? So he's so we're we're now walking into this place. I want you to see your access to the kingdom. Because in the kingdom is everything you need. It's the awareness that Jesus had as he walked this earth of him being the kingdom. Let, um, Mark 10, 13 through 16, and this is the Passion Translation. And it says, the parents kept bringing their little children to Jesus so that he would lay his hands on them and bless them. But the disciples kept rebuking and scolding the people for doing it. When Jesus saw what was happening, he became indignant with his disciples and said to them, let all the little children come to me and never hinder them. Don't you know that God's kingdom realm exists for such as these? Listen to the truth I speak. Whoever does not open their arms to receive God's kingdom like a teachable child will never enter into it. Then he embraced each child and laying his hand on them, he lovingly blessed each one. He says, if you don't open your arms to receive God's kingdom like a teachable child, you won't see it. Receiving the kingdom is, is 
is part of me coming without my agenda, without what I think I already know, what I think I already see, because that's generally how we come. Lord, this is going on and that's going on and this is not right and this is not right. That's how we come. He says, you won't see, you cannot enter, you cannot access unless you come as a teachable child. You can tell a child anything and they will believe you. <laughs> Kid, children have the be their imagination. They have not learned to, to stifle their imagination yet. So he's saying your access to the kingdom, number one, is dependent on your teachability. How open are you to receive? Can you perceive something different? Remember, I told you guys that <clears throat> he, I, I was, you know, fussing and frustrated, you know, and, and coming to God, like, what is going on? What is this and this and this? And he asked me, what do you know of me? And I, I, so I started writing some things down. I, I know you love me. I know you love me. I know you're with me. What do you know of me? He asked me again. I know you won't leave me. He kept asking me five times. It was five times before I got to where I didn't have anything else to say. And he was like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You don't know enough of me to think that this situation is over. All of your all of your ideas of what you think is supposed to happen and how it's supposed to happen, let all that fall out of your fingers because you don't know enough. You cannot exhaust the ways that I have. I am unsearchable. I am unsearchable. So how can you ever get frustrated over a situation? You don't know how many ways I can solve it. You don't know everything about me. <laughs> I'm trying to teach you something else about me and something else about you. So you, we have to, in order to see the kingdom, we have to come without thinking we know everything <laughs> so that we can receive new knowledge, new wisdom, new understanding And John 3, 3 and 13, because again, we're talking about being able to see the kingdom. The kingdom exists in a place that's not visible. That's what we just read in Matthew. The kingdom exists in a place that is not visible to the human eye. And so John 3 3 through 13 in Passion Translation says, Jesus answered Nicodemus. So Nicodemus is up here asking God, how in the world do you get into the kingdom? And Jesus answers, Nicodemus, listen to this eternal truth. Before a person can perceive God's kingdom realm, they must first experience a rebirth. Before you can perceive what is in the kingdom realm, you must first experience a rebirth. Now, we use this scripture a lot to talk about salvation. Strictly, it's for baptism. But that's not all this is talking about. He says, if you want to perceive the kingdom, if you want to see what's in there, you're going to have to experience a rebirth. It says, it's in, he says, it's impossible for a man to go back into the womb. Wait a minute, I'm sorry, I skipped something. Nicodemus said, rebirth. How can a gray-headed man be reborn? It's impossible for a man to go back into the womb a second time and be reborn. Jesus answered. And see here, this is, this is what we, this is the very thing I'm talking about right here. Nicodemus sees the natural first. He says, you're using a term of rebirth. And his first thought is natural. This makes no sense. It's impossible. 
How can it be done? You see, and when our first response is from the natural realm, <laughs> that's an area we need to be reborn in. Right? Jesus answered, I speak an eternal truth. And he said this first, when he first started talking, an eternal truth, not a temporal truth, not a natural truth. I see, I speak an eternal truth. Unless you are born of water and spirit wind, you will never enter God's kingdom realm. For the natural realm can only give birth to things that are natural. But the spiritual realm gives birth to supernatural life. Supernatural life, supernatural life, supernatural life. That means taking five loaves and feeding 5,000. That's supernatural living. That means taking $100 and paying a $200 bill. That's supernatural living. He says, you, you have to first be reborn. You have to not see what's natural first. You have to see what's spiritual first. And when you do that, you live a supernatural life. This is not just a scripture about eternal salvation. It's not just a scripture about how you get into heaven. That's what we've taken this as. This is a scripture about rebirth. And that is a rebirth. Not natural spirit. And, and he says, you shouldn't be amazed by my statement. You all must be born from above. For the spirit wind blows as it chooses. You can hear it sound, but you don't know where it came from or where it's going. So it is within the hearts of those who are spirit born. Then Nicodemus replied, but I don't understand. What do you mean? How does this happen? Jesus answered, Nicodemus, aren't you the respected teacher in Israel and you don't understand this revelation? Haven't you been preaching for 30 years? Haven't you been in the church? You, oh, you, but you could quote every scripture and you don't understand this revelation. <laughs> we, Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is why we had to be teachable. Right. <laughs> It says, I speak eternal truths. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's go back. This is not about what you see. It's not about what you see. This is not about natural. It is eternal. It's third time Jesus says this to him. It is an eternal truth about things I know things I've seen and experienced and you still don't accept what I reveal because you're still sitting in the natural. This is exactly our, this is what he's doing. This is exactly what happens with us when we are looking at a situation from the natural perspective and we get a word on that situation and we keep going, but, but I don't understand how, the, how do you pay you can't pay $200 worth of bills with $100, but, and Jesus keeps taking it right back. I'm giving you an eternal truth, eternal, spirit first truth. If you want to live a spirit, a supernatural life, you got to see spirit first. I'm trying to take you out of that cycle, I'm trying to take you out of seeing natural first. He's like, and, and he says, you don't accept what I'm revealing. I've given you an eternal truth on that situation, but you don't accept what I'm revealing because you're still looking from a natural realm. If you're unable to understand and believe what I told you about the natural realm, what will you do when I begin to unveil the heavenly realm? He's like, this is just a small thing I'm telling you. I'm trying to tell you, number one, stop paying attention at, at what you see or what you think you know. And, and there's so much more beyond this. How do you ever, how are you ever going to get to that? I haven't even begun. <laughs> he says, no one has risen into the heavenly realm except the son of man who also exists in heaven. 
This is before Jesus is ascended again, right? He's still walking on earth and he's pointing to a time where I'm going up there, but I'm the only one that's been up there so far. When I go up there, you're going to get to go up there. How are you going to be able to handle that? <laughs> How are you going to be able to peek into the kingdom there when you can't even see the kingdom revealed in front of you here? And so we see that Jesus says, I, I'm here. I'm the kingdom. You can access this kingdom. There is a spiritual realm that you have access to. It's a natural, it's not a natural thing. This is a spirit. You have to be reborn. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit now is Jesus within us. The Holy Spirit now represents the kingdom within us. Jesus was the kingdom. The kingdom now resides in us because of the Holy Spirit. Um, John 3, 34 through 35 in the Passion Translation, we've talked about this one before. It says, the one whom God has sent to represent him will speak the words of God, for God has poured out upon him the fullness of the Spirit without limitation. We've talked about that before. Remember, the Holy Spirit is over him without limitation. Without limitation. You have the Holy Spirit without limitation. The Father loves his Son so much that all things have been given into his hands. Whatever is true of Jesus is true of you. He's given all things into his hands and the Holy Spirit without measure. The kingdom is in you without limitation. Without limitation. So here's what Jesus said to them. He says, I am the kingdom come. <laughs> I am the kingdom come. And now you can say that. Everybody say it right now. I am the kingdom come. I am the kingdom, kingdom come. come. Say it like you mean it. I am, I the, am kingdom the kingdom come. The kingdom come. Exactly. My, my. I am the kingdom come. I am the kingdom come. I am. And, you know, and, and I'm going to leave it with this. You know, God said to me, he says, when I wanted apple trees, I planted, when I wanted apples, I planted apple trees. I wanted oranges, I planted orange trees. He said, whatever he wants, he plants. And he plants it with the ability to reproduce. When he wanted a wealth transfer to happen in this earth, he planted you. That's how you tie in to this Primerica business. You see, he planted you. You are the kingdom come. And when he wanted this wealth transfer to take place in the earth, he planted you. You are the kingdom come. You are the kingdom come. Whatever he wants, he plants. And so he planted you. He planted you. And he planted you with the ability to reproduce yourself. You, what, what we're going to talk about next is about that, that fruitfulness, about what you produce, because remember, we're still all in manifestation, but he said, when I wanted the wealth transfer to take place, I planted you. 
So now you have to, now you know what, what tree you are. Because that's the first thing. You need to know what tree you are. <laughs> and I think that people, we, we get wishy-washy about that. If you are a wealth transfer agent, money is attracted to you. How can you think of yourself any differently? Right. So anyway, we'll, we'll go further into that next week. I'm going to leave it right here for today. Amen. 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 And let me just say to the group, amen. And you won't, if you, if you don't know who you are, mm -hmm. if you don't know that you are a wealth transfer tree, <laughs> if you don't know, glory to God. And and Jacinta, again, I I thank you because I'm I'm eating all this up and 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 uh, not only eating it up but you know meditating on it and and sitting with it and rolling around because I'm sure uh, what may be happening to all of us is that we're we may be battling some former or we may be balanced some stinking thinking that we used to have. Mm -hmm. And now we have a, we have a, a, you know, we're hearing something totally different. Glory to God. <laughs> that in essence, it's just attacking the traditional way we looked at things. And now, now, you know, the Lord is saying, okay, I, I, I want y'all to understand. Yeah. We're, we're Nicodemus mm -hmm. and we're bringing, we're bringing back, you know, man, wait a minute, this don't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. I understand. But wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you have been in the Bible for a long time, right? Uh, you haven't studied. Okay, all right. But let me just bring some clarity now. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's you know I'm speaking for me. That's what God is doing with me, and and I want to learn it because I remember saying a long time ago, Lord, I I want to I want to be like Jesus, act like Jesus, do like Jesus. And God says, Okay, I got something for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you. I'm I'm gonna show you who you are in me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you your real identity. Amen. Yes, right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just said it's breakthrough time. Amen. 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 I know that's what stood out to me. Breakthrough is breaking cycles. Um, and I I'm just my spirit is just filled. Um, thank you. Um, I, I'm going to go back through and like unveil these scriptures um, just to because I love how he's speaking to us like he he really is very intentional with what it is we need to hear mm -hmm. when we need to hear it and um, just being mindful to continue to apply his word right and um, be truthful but when I tell you um I've definitely since Friday has shifted um, mm -hmm. a lot of how I, you know, just continue to move through the day. Um, I have definitely just been very mindful, very strategic that every time I go to the Lord, it is in the spirit mm -hmm. and I am in that storehouse and I am in that kingdom and I, I am declaring and decreeing and I'm legislating but I am seeing full pictures. Mm -hmm. And I love that you broke down the breakdown of it because it is important through illumination, mm -hmm. but just understanding that when we get to that revelation part, mm -hmm. then there is no, that's where it's declared, decreed, legislated. Exactly. That's, that's it, right? Exactly. Um, so I, I, I love that. And I'm just excited. I, I am excited. Uh, and the devil is, he tries to be tricky because I'm telling you, when you strong in one way, and he feels like I cannot get in. I cannot get in with her right there. Mm -hmm. Like you just showed her too much, mm -hmm. you know? And so what he's doing is he's trying to come through with family, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, just weird, weird stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm just closing the door, sealing it tight yeah. and, and staying forward. But um, I will say that from even my personal testimony, when I tell you, Woo, 
God being in the kingdom, how he has provided mm -hmm. each time and he shows it step by step, mind blowing, mm -hmm. mind blowing. And so I also thank you for the reminder that I don't know it all. Just every time you go in there, <laughs> just be ready to learn. Right. And I have also in prayer been able to just be quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, I say my thank yous and then I really just be quiet mm -hmm. um, and that's not a norm for Lakita <laughs> <laughs> but God is yes. good so. yes. Amen. Amen. I know that one too and I gotta shut up more <laughs> <laughs> amen it's 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 a different thing to learn to listen you know but it is so 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 necessary and then when you learn to listen then you gotta learn to listen for all of it <laughs> And that because I was I would learn to listen. Then I started listening and I'd get one thing. I'm like, OK, go. <laughs> right. And did not listen for the whole, you know, so, yeah, it's it's a good thing. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, anybody else have anything before we hop off? Nope. OK. All right. Y'all will listen. God is, he's coming through, man. He's coming through in such a strong way. And whew, I, we, we, um, we're in there. We're in there. We are in there. We are in the house. We are in the house. We got access to it all, man. It is such an exciting time, right? So, all right, y'all. Well, we will, um, we will see everybody, I guess, on Saturday.